Mo's. Mo is a seasoned technology executive and servant leader with 10 years of experience leading and facilitating global teams. He possesses a wealth of product, project management, analysis skills, leading teams to develop new products, drive incremental revenue, and streamline national um, operations. He's managing director of Skill Hats, a global tech company, launching motivated professionals into dream careers through e-learning and career development. Channeling his passion for education, Mo has developed globally accredited training courses with PMI, IIBA and Scrum Alliance. He has trained 400 plus project managers, Scrum masters, business analysts, and product owners who are now thriving in their mission-driven um, careers. Welcome, Mo. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. How are you feeling? How's your day been so far? My day is great. My day is fantastic. Broadcasting live from Wakanda. Uh, so that's what we are right now. I'm kidding. I'm in Toronto, Canada. Um, shout out to everybody, shout out to K-Scope, you know, doing God's work, helping the African community continue to thrive, helping us get connected to each other. Uh, we share a similar mission at Skill Hat, so I'm excited to be here. Amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're just going to get right into it. Um, the main uh, uh, of this live is to get people who don't really understand how to transition to tech and how courses play, what, what, what part courses play in, in helping them make that transition. Um, Skill Hat, we know, has offered a lot of like amazing courses. And today we're gonna to be talking about top three courses. And um, before we go on, you can tell us a bit about Skill Hat, maybe something you've not mentioned and in the different courses that we're gonna be discussing today. Yeah, absolutely. So at Skill Hat, uh, what we do is that we train people who are really, really motivated and smart in tech skills. And then we place them in strategic roles at the world's best companies. We focus on the BIPOC community, so Blacks, people of color. We focus on women, we focus on newcomers to Canada and the US, and we focus on new grads. So this is under, uh, this is a marginalized community. Right now, mm -hmm. guess what percentage of tech jobs in Canada are held by Black people? It's 3.5%, 3.5%. Guess what percentage of tech jobs are held by women across the world? 1%. <laughs> It's not as bad. 26% of tech jobs are held by women across the world. So 74% is held by men. So black people, women are minorities in the technology space, right? Um, and if you look at venture funding, guess what percentage of investment in tech companies went to black founded companies last last couple of years? Do you know? Do you want to guess? Um, maybe 20%. 2%. So the numbers are staggering. Guess how many percentage of women CEOs exist in Fortune 500 companies? Guess how many black CEOs exist? When you keep looking at the numbers, it shows that black people, people of color and women are marginalized in, right. in leadership, in, in, um, in technology specifically. So we set to solve that problem. But why is that problem important? It's important because diverse workspaces, diverse yeah. companies perform the best. Like if I go to Starbucks, and I see somebody who looks like me as a customer, but also, you know, at, at the barista serving me, I'm like, oh, what's up? What's going on? Right? I'm, I feel more that, comfortable, right? So now I'm buying more coffee. If they're playing Drake at Starbucks, they're playing Whisket at Starbucks. I'm like, oh, you're playing Whisket at Starbucks, I'm lit. I'm staying there longer, right? So when there's more representation, businesses do better. So it's not just like we're saying, oh, you know, hire, hire black and, you know, the whole George Floyd thing is it's actually good for business. Right. So. The problem, though, is that a lot of people in the community, women, people of color, don't, are not aware of opportunities in the tech space, or even when they don't believe that it's for them. Mm -hmm. So first, it's that mindset shift. We help shift that mindset and show the opportunities by doing stuff like what we're doing right now, yeah. right? And so whenever we, we now get people aware of all the tech opportunities, it then becomes, okay, what's, what's the right one for me, okay. right? Okay. Once you figure that out, how do you learn the skill? So there's four gaps. So if you're joining right now, pay attention. If you're trying to get into tech, you know, what we discussed in the next 30, 40 minutes could change your life if you apply these skills, right? Mm -hmm. So I've seen people transition from making $35,000 a year in customer service to in less than nine months to a year, making $140,000. I'm sorry, you have to say that because of the numbers you just spitting The numbers are staggering. I've seen them over and over, right? I've seen, I've trained people where they were making 35K a year in customer service or whatever operational job, 
So one of our alumni just joined the call, Bookie, and the other folks. If you're if you're on a call right now, you're still had a long taking our program, and you've changed your life. Put a comment in the chat so that people who are watching know that you know this is uh, this is real. So I was saying, we've uh, we we've done a number of um, we've trained a number of people, and I've seen them change their lives. So for example, the number I just I just gave was with one person. She took our BA course. She was making thirty five thousand dollars a year in customer service. Mm -hmm. Her first job in, in, in tech, she took our BA course. She became a business analyst, an IT business analyst. Mm -hmm. She took a, a nine week course, and in two months, she increased her income by fifty percent to making fifty five k. In another six months from then, she wanted to start making ninety thousand dollars, and now she makes one hundred forty thousand dollars. We have two of our alumni on the call. I see Latoya. Same thing with Latoya, right? So, you can change your life if you take a few steps. So there's four gaps that prevent people from getting promoted in your workplace mm -hmm. or making a career change to a high paying role. So the first gap is most of us know the skills. I don't even know how to do this thing. How am I going to get the job? Mm -hmm. So you've got to fill that skills gap and that's the technical skill and the soft skill. Mm -hmm. The second gap that we feel that skill had is a hands on experience, which is critical. I'll come back and talk mm -hmm. about that. Right. The third gap is, is networking, having a network of peers and executives that are people that can give you insight and intel mm -hmm. and help refer you. And the fourth gap is that confidence gap, being able to know, to be confident in your resume, being confident in interviews, to be able to nail the job. And so a lot of people think about making a transition or getting promoted and just think, oh, I'm going to Google watch a course mm -hmm. on YouTube. But a lot of other stuff that comes with the, the effort. Um, to be able to make that transition. Uh, and the second piece of hands-on experience, we'll talk more about that at length, but that's one of the biggest ones that most people don't have or can't find easily. And we built a very simple, actually not simple, very uh, effective framework at SkillHat to help you get the hands-on experience you need. You wanna be a developer, you come to SkillHat, not only will you learn the skills, you also actually have experience coming out of the education program. There's a whole silo between education and and the workforce, they're separate. They're not always taught when you go to school, you come yeah. out of school, you're like, this is not what's happening in the workplace that I'm learning in school. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, we do both. Skill has the tech company. We're not just, the, we're, we're a tech company who have the depth of a university mm -hmm. as far as education programs, but the speed and innovation of a startup. Right. So when you work with us, you will have that pace and that speed and you will connect directly with employers and learn exactly what employers want and work with employers while in the program building software. So we'll talk more about how we do that in a bit. Mm -hmm. I want you to set the stage for what we do and how we do it at a high level. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. And for everyone that's joining us, we're discussing the four gaps um, between you and your next opportunity in tech. And uh, uh, Mo is also sharing the different um, numbers that most people have experienced, which like some some stories. And if you really, if you want to transition to tech, you definitely, mm -hmm. and if you can't stay on this live, please tap on uh, Skill Hats. We're joining with them on the top, I believe. And you can read more about their different courses. And if you intend to take one, you can use our code to get $50 off. Um, and I feel like it's, 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 it, it's a good investment if, for your next um, um, career uh, step. Now, I wanted to talk about the, um, the just the story piece. You talked about business analysis course, like the analysis course that is currently one of the top three courses. Um, let's did you know of someone who had who went through the whole experience and what was the job success support like? What was that networking piece? How did they implement it? And a, a lot of people too may may have um, may sort of connect with that person based off of their personality. Some people are not really outgoing or they're a, a bit shy to 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 put themselves out there. How did skill navigate that and how how did they get to where they are right now? Yeah, so we'll talk about the BA course. First of all, what is a business analyst? A BA is a person who helps a company to create new internal business capability, helping the company do something they could not do before. Either helping them with a way to process orders faster or a way to uh, be to have automation in their business process, you know, or a way to increase their revenue, right? And we do that through technology. A BA is usually the bridge between the business team and the technical team. So say a hair store, launches and they don't have a way to process orders or a way to uh, a simple website to make a booking or for example they have a goal to increase revenue and be able to sit with the executives and ask okay what are your business goals mm -hmm. and then map out the goals and document the list of requirements and hand that off to a technical team the list of developers 
to say, hey, build me this thing for my client. When that's built, B will then test it. Mm -hmm. So B is have skill sets like communication, requirements management, software testing, uh, business case development. First of all, looking at is this a business or is this an investment worth making? Um, data analysis, things of that nature, strategy. So you learn all those skill sets and you can help a business increase their revenue, improve your processes uh, through business analysis. So that's what the role is. So how you know it's for you is if you have good communication skills, so you want to see change happen, you know, you want to be innovative, you want to um, get companies from point A to point B, help train people in new systems and new technology. And so that's the role. So then how do you get there? What are some success stories we've seen? Well, the average alumni at Skillhow increase their, increases their income by $45,000 on average. So if they were making 60 k before they came in, now they're making 105000 Just yesterday, we had one of our alumni get two offers. As a matter of fact, this week, we've seen five offers alone in this week. Uh, yeah, one for 200 k two for 110 and 120 uh, another for 95 This lady was making 45 k she doubled her income. And I can show you all these. We post these all the time on, on, our, on our Instagram. Yeah. So um, numbers that we see are kind of staggering. Even I myself look at them like, God damn, you were making 35K last week. <laughs> well, now you're making this. Like, this is wild, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But it's because of the skill set, right? We all, many of us have these skills. We're just not in the highest opportunity vehicle. We're not just in the right place, you know? It's like if you're a good football player, right? You could be a great football player, but if you're playing like A and B, you know A and B is? Yeah. A and B is like... It's a Nigerian football club in like Inugu or something. Yeah. But if you're playing in Inugu, you're never gonna get the the money or right. the, the the platform versus if you're mm -hmm. playing in Spain in Real Madrid or in a city that you have access to, you know, a world stage and all that. And that's the same thing. You can have all these great communication skills, the hunger, but if you are in a role that puts you in the so I'm not I'm not gonna say anything bad about a specific role, but typically close ended roles where you're just following a script like customer service or you're setting password or tech uh, support, you know, something like that, where you're not getting a chance to be innovative and drive growth and help the company make more money. Mm -hmm. right? And you are limited in how much money you can make and how much innovation you can put in. And so the business analyst pathway allows you to make as as much innovation, as much money as possible because you can then be a contractor. Mm -hmm. you you got multiple contracts, right? Or you could just be a consultant. Uh, you could, we have people who are contractors that make 100 bucks an hour, right? That's 200K a year, easy. And then they got multiple contracts like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the BA pathway is great. It's, you don't have to be super technical. Yeah. All you have to have is great communication skills, a willingness to learn, and just a fire to keep to not just keep the status quo. If you're a person who just likes to keep things as they are, you don't like change, you don't like to, because change is hard, right? You yeah. Like, yeah and if, you don't, if you're not a people person, mm. you don't like to talk to people, if you want to be in the back, just maybe coding, you know, or doing some data analysis and just send an email once in a while, that's cool, but that's not the role for you. You got to be at the forefront championing change, understanding mm -hmm. strategy, figuring out how we're going to take this company to making 10 million from, from $1 million a month. That's what a BA does. Wow, that's thank you so much for sharing. And I feel like we have a, a lot, a lot more um, people who have joined us. So if you're just joining us, we were just just discussing the business analyst analysis course, and um, Mo was just telling us what a business analyst does and you, what skill set you need to have if that's sort of like where you want to go. And you also talked about the the, the growth. Someone went from forty five thousand to um, I believe it was a. 90,000, 45 to well, 90. This person went from making 35K to making 50K, then 90K, then 140K. All in, in like less than two years. Less than two years. Okay, so this course that um, we we'll just talked about is the business and analysis course, and it, it is on their website. When is the next cohort starting? Just for those who just wanted to. Yeah, we have a course starting every two or three months. So if you miss the next one, there's always another one. Uh, the next one does start May 27th. May 27th of 2023, okay? Uh, so it's about pretty much a month from now, four weeks. So you have time. We only take 30 per cohort. We're close to being sold out of our next cohort. The next one after that will be in uh, probably like uh, July or beginning of August, I'm not 100% sure. It's a mm -hmm. course, only five hours a week, uh, five hours a week and uh, five hours of class and then three hours of homework. Uh, and collaboration, which is very collaborative, it's very hands-on. Mm -hmm. You're learning the seven skill sets of the BA. So what are the seven skill sets? One is the SDLC, the software development lifecycle. 
Two is requirements management. Three is prototyping. Four is process mapping. Five is software testing. Six is agile. And then seven is business case development. You learn all that in seven weeks, your life will change, I guarantee you. That's, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing. Someone had said that it sounds more like a, pro, a product manager role. What's the difference between a business analyst and a product manager? That's a great question. You could almost say that uh, product management is an expression of business analysis. Okay. Interesting. So as a BA, you're helping a company create new capability. Um, and when you learn BA skills, you can actually go into product management. You can go into customer success. You can even go into project management. They're all ancillary skill sets, but they have more dominant things. And the, the difference is context. So mm -hmm. most of the time when, you're, when your job title says BA, you're working within a business, helping to improve that business so they can deliver a service. So let's say you work as a BA at the bank, right? You could be looking at the banking process to remove waste. Mm -hmm. You could be looking at how to grow the, the banking services. You could be looking at how to implement a customer service phone app that integrates with the CRM so that customer data is in one place. So you're working on internal systems most of the time. The bank, the bank's business is that they take your money, they're receiving investments, uh, and then they're paying out interest. So you're supporting that through process and technology. Now, a product manager typically is a bit different. Mm -hmm. A product manager is responsible to grow a specific product in terms of growing the product's revenue. Okay. Uh, identifying the strategy to figure out how will this product win in the market? Who are our competitors? How do we beat the competitors? Mm -hmm. How do we figure a roadmap for how this product will grow over the next couple of years, right? So the difference is responsibility. BAs are responsible for implementing a project, implementing a change, but once that change is done, you're not accountable to then say, oh, we didn't make a million dollars in the next, in, in a year, therefore we didn't meet our goals. The product manager has that accountability because you own that product, your goal is to grow the user base. Um, so you're looking at different metrics. You're actually doing the operational piece of the product and growing that. So that's a bit of a difference in the BA and the product manager. They're, they're quite similar, very similar interests. The product manager, we'll talk more about that course as well. Mm -hmm. Right now, the first course we're talking about is business analysis. And so uh, very similar, again, to product management, definitely a difference. Product management has even a higher upside for income. The 200K job that somebody got this week, yesterday, was a product manager job with a San Francisco-based company from Canada uh, in the U.S. So product manager jobs pay up to 500 k a year, even sometimes, because you're building these products that could change the world. Facebook has a billion users, right? <laughs> even if each user paid $1 a year, that's a billion dollars easy. So, you know, you're building these products like we're on right now at Instagram. So the upside is really high. Again, we'll talk about product. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the difference between product management and business analysis. Okay, that's perfect. And one last question I had before we move to the next course is, what does the future look like? Just seeing as there are lots of um, te technological like advancements coming in, AI is taking over. You know, a lot of people are worried, like, should I even be going, staying here? Or should I be, you know, pursuing something in, in security, like cybersecurity? Like, what would you say to someone who's like worried about, you know, investing in a BA course because they're thinking it's no longer going to be, you know, the future or their job is going to be taken over. Yeah, th there's no, there's no chance that the BA job or the BA skill sets will not be in need or will be displaced by AI. Okay, so let me explain. If you look at what AI displaces, AI displaces monotonous repetitive tasks. For example, video editing, right? Normally with this live we have, I will take that whole one hour live and hire an editor to say, create me short clips that I can use for Instagram shorts or YouTube shorts. And then they charge me money for that, mm -hmm. right? You use AI to do that. It just, you just put it into AI tools and it just chop it up for you and send it back to here is 24 videos you can use. So that's the monotonous task, right? Um, so the BA job is not repetitive and monotonous. It's about understanding people, understanding soft skills, um, understanding hesitation, convincing people, training individuals, mm -hmm. right? So AI will not replace your job. People that use AI will replace your job. So as a BA, you should be learning, or rather as somebody who wants to get into tech, get into business analysis, learn that function and then learn AI and learn how to be the best in that function using AI. Mm -hmm. So for example, as a BA, you will create a requirements document. 
it might take you time to do that. If, if it was me, I'd just throw in chat GPT and say, create me a requirements document for this specific thing. And then you align whatever it gives you to the actual context of your organization, and then you gain speed and advantage. So in that case, it is actually helping you, not replacing you. But the more important point is the skill sets. When you take a course with the skill, how you're learning a specific skill, whatever you build, builds you. So you're building yourself regardless. You're building the ability to be able to learn technology and learning innovation process. So you're actually learning to go build your own AI, and mm -hmm. right? Because the people who are talking about AI is like this. People mm -hmm. who are using AI is like this. People who are building AI is like this. Very small number of people. So the skill sets that actually go build AI is actually things like business analysis and product management, because now you're understanding how do I go from requirements to design, to coding, to testing, to launch. Mm -hmm. actually, right so um you're also learning about people's skills process mapping you know you're learning these skill sets that actually are important to build technology right and so i would completely double down on learning things like any kind of technology skill right now I would double down because even if things change in the future that foundational skill set that you've learned today is what will help you adapt to the future if you don't learn it now you're even more disadvantaged because you're going to be having a play catch that's true that's true that's true. Wow. Thank you so much. And welcome, everyone. We, we have a, a, a lot more people that have joined live. Welcome. We're, gonna, we're talking about three courses that you could take uh, to help you start your career in tech or transition um, to tech. Um, I had a quick question, and I feel like this question will probably cover the other courses, and it's more so on the job success support piece. I know each course has that, so we can talk about that now. What does the job success support look like? And this is after the course is completed. You know, what, what does that experience look like? Yeah, so at Skill Hat, everyone gets a chance to get support. Um, one, one of the problems that we set to solve with education is that a lot of people take a course, but then when they're done, they got to figure it out. Right. One thing that we do that really helps people figure it out is career coaching. So once you're done with your course, you have a career coach who will work with you on your resume. They'll sit with you, you know, like a video call like this and look at every single line in your resume. And first of all, we'll look at what's the right role for you based on your location, your goals. Are you a single mom? Do you need to be home early? Do you need to work remotely? Wow. Or are you a professional who wants to be on go and work like in a downtown area? What's the right role for you based on your personal situation? Mm -hmm. Let me figure that out first. Then we look at those roles and we work on your resume with you to help your resume be a strong fit for that role. And then we also work on your personal brand, on your LinkedIn. Uh, and we give you access to one of our free courses by our partner at 3Skills to help you create a monumental personal brand on LinkedIn that will make you very attractive to recruiters. Wow. And once you've done that with you, we'll also work with you on your interview skills. So we'll simulate the interview process and ask you questions you can expect in the job interview and hear your responses, and then pinpoint your strong points, pinpoint your storytelling, your inflection points, and help you become more confident. So by the time you're done, you have a list of all the interview questions you're gonna be asked in the interview, your answers you should give, and how to improve those answers. And that session is recorded as well, you can watch it over and over and improve yourself, right? So there's nothing like work, and these are not, you're not gonna be working with a career coach who's like an HR recruiter, which is great, but you're gonna be working with an actual person who is a senior in that role. So if you want to be a product manager, you will be paired with a senior product manager to help you become a junior product manager. So you will be paired with a mentor who is two levels above you in that specific function to help you and drag your hand as you get in. Because it, be, it could be very, um, it could be very lonely yeah. when you're transitioning and you're not sure if the resume is good, mm -hmm. you're not getting all the responses, you're a bit discouraged. Your career coaches are critical. Um, we have, I think we have five career coaches right now for all different functions, and we hear a lot of uh, great things about them. I, at some point, I'll pop over my screen, show you guys a bunch of screenshots, you know, a bunch of uh, success stories and whatnot, and we'll get there shortly. That's amazing. Thank you so much. And for everyone joining, if you'd like to learn more about the courses, you can tap the link in Skill Hats bio and just like it, I think there's just a link that takes you straight to the courses. Okay, so the next course we have on here is Agile Project Management. Um, so tell us about that course. You can start off with um, like talk about the salaries in the last one and some success stories, and then we'll talk about the education piece. Yeah, so uh, the Agile Project Management, what is that? Agile Project Management is being able to help a company. Um, to lead projects. So project management uh, means 
leading a company to achieve a goal through projects, which have a beginning and an end and a specific unique outcome. A project could be launching a new app or a new website or even the physical facility or a new branch or whatever the project is. Um, companies invest money in projects, right? Right now we're investing and in, we probably invest somewhere around 50 to 100K every quarter on the new thing we're building. I'm a busy executive. I can't do all, I have so many ideas, right? So I need to hand off to somebody and say, hey, this is my idea, here's the budget, go get it done. Mm. And so you need to learn how to be that guy or that girl who goes and gets it done. And mm. that's really the, the project management skills. As a PM, you manage really resources in three ways. You manage people, you manage time, you manage money. And so you're learning how to do that in the Agile project management course, whether you're using a traditional waterfall framework or an agile framework as a scrum master or product owner. And so in that course, you take that course, there's three job opportunities you can get, mostly two, actually four. One, project coordinator, two, project manager, three, scrum master. And then depending on your background, if you have a strategy background um, or business background, you can actually become a product owner from that course as well. So in that course, you learn the fundamentals of PM, you learn about um, how do you manage the scope of a project? How do you manage the schedule? How do you create the budget? How do you manage risk? How do you report to executives? And then you learn about Scrum, which is a framework for building apps so fast, right? So the, the Facebook, like if you look at Instagram, Instagram, what it is today is not what it was right. six, eight months ago. There's a bunch of changes that were made, mm -hmm. right? So these teams are running Scrum, which is every two weeks we're building out new pieces of software and we keep adding new pieces, adding new pieces, and that's what we call Scrum. And so you're learning how to become a scrum master to lead a scrum team. Guess what the average, so a scrum team is a team of uh, a product owner, a scrum master, and developers, and designers. So a tech team who builds software. Mm -hmm. Guess the average cost of a scrum team in Canada. Like what, how much does it cost to be as a CEO to have a scrum team who's building, building software? Um, I'd probably say 60,000. So, so let, me, let, me, let me frame that for you, right? So the average scrum team build software every two weeks. Like every two weeks there's a new thing out. There's a new feature out, right? Guess the cost of a two week sprint. Uh, 100,000. Well, you're close. Uh, it's like $40,000. Okay. Five to $40,000 for a two week mm -hmm. sprint. So mm -hmm. now you're a CEO or your company is spending 25 to 40K every two weeks, right? And your job is to get the most benefit of those features built every two weeks. How do you do that? And that's the job. Mm -hmm of agile project management, of product ownership, of being a scrum master, is to get the most value, to figure out what's the most viable thing I could build in two weeks, every two weeks. And then how do I get the team to be efficient and engaged and remove any impediments, remove any blockers, remove any lack of communication to get that done. And so the, the leveling course teaches you how to do that. Um, as regards some stories, there's a pretty cool story of one of our alumni who was working at SurveyMonkey. You know SurveyMonkey? Yeah. One of the big server, survey companies was in sales at SurveyMonkey. And then he took this course, and then he got a really good project coordinator job, took it very seriously, killing in this job. And then his boss who hired him left, right? So his boss was a project manager. He was a project coordinator. Uh, and then when the boss left, he stepped into the boss's shoes doing some PM work. Um, and he increased his income from, like, maybe 50K to, like, 90K which was already great. Uh, no, he went from, sorry, he went from 40, 35K to 70 initially, right? Mm -hmm. Doubled his income right away um, by taking this course. And then uh, they brought in a new PM eventually because he was still a project coordinator, right? Mm -hmm. This new PM was acting all busy. He was working remotely. He would have meetings in his car sometimes, showing up to meetings late. And after a while, they fired the new PM. They just fired him. Like, you're not serious about this. And they promoted the guy who came from skill hat and then he took his new boss's mm -hmm. job. So that's to show you that somebody who just learned the skills gets getting his own boss fired because he's just mm -hmm. that good. Mm -hmm. right? So that's just one story. We have a lot of stories. We have one, Gary, who came into the course yesterday. He's now a scrum master at TD. Um, we have Sam who's making $180,000 a year at, uh, as a scrum master for a U.S. company from Canada. We have tons of these stories of people who've taken the Agile project management course and transformed their lives. Uh, project management's in demand and even in nonprofits. So that's the, the, the APM course is a course that, even if you don't want to get into tech, um, you just want to learn how to manage projects, whether it's in construction or for non-for-profits, like development projects, any kind of project-based initiative whereby you're doing something new that has a beginning 
and, and in a unique scope. That course will help you lead a team, manage people, manage time, and manage money. Okay. I have a question about this, the soft skills a person needs to have. Like, what kind of uh, a successful or someone interested in um, APM have? Sorry, the question is the soft skills you need to have to know, yeah. it's, a good, to know it's a good fit for you. Yeah, exactly. Before you go in, right? Yes. Before you go in, to know if Agile project management is a good fit for you is your personality. Are you a person who likes to make change happen? Similar to the BA side of things. Are you a person who likes to lead and be at the forefront? If you're not, it might not be time yet, okay. right? Um, well, that's one. Two, um, do you, are you good with like just logical thinking, right? Are you a person who can do budgets and, and do math? Right. Um, also, things like being able to have people skills. Are you someone who can facilitate a meeting, um, hold other people accountable? Are you bold enough to do that? If you're very shy, you know, because people in, in project management, you're nobody's boss. Right. You have to get to do work. So, like, you're a PM or project manager. You have the engineering team. You have the design team. They report the head of engineering. That's their boss. The head of engineering will give them to you and say, okay, you have this engineer for five months. Uh, and you have a design, you have marketing, you're working with the cross-functional team across different functions, and they all report to their own boss, but you have to get them to get stuff done. And so you have to lead through influence. And if you're not a person who can hold people accountable, you can't lead, you don't have that, well, the course will help you learn those skills. But the truth is, we only pick people who, are already, who already have that personality, right. and then we just get them and accelerate that. But if that's not you, or just you have to find something different. Right, so if you're more a person who wants to work on repetitive stuff over and over, for example, a repetitive role, so to speak, is like QA, quality assurance. Quality assurance is a very important role because if you bought a product right now and there was a defect in it, like if the iPhone just didn't work when you made a phone call, you would throw it in the trash, right? So there's somebody who's responsible to do that, to test every single iPhone before it comes out, right? To test every single line of code, for example. But that's just not me. I just can do the same thing over and over. I'll just go crazy. That's help for me. Right? I want to be doing new things, new innovation, new product. I've done it once, that's good. I hand it off to somebody else and we'll do a new thing. So if that's you, mm -hmm. then project work is good. If you feel like I'm bored at my job, I and mean, we get that all the time. Half the guys who call me, or call my sales team, say I'm in this job, I'm in accounting, every month is the same month, every conservation, every day is the same thing over and over. I want a challenge, I want a new thing, I want to be able to build, a, a, I have this idea, I want to go build it. That's how you know that project that management is your might be for you. Amazing. How about the uh, the education piece? How long is it? Is it six weeks? Um, and what does the uh, job success look like? Sorry, not the job success, actually. We're going to talk about the um, hands-on tech accelerator because we didn't talk about it the last time. So we'll talk about the term of the, the program and then the um, accelerator program. Yeah, absolutely. So the Agile Project Management course is 11 weeks long. Um, our next cohort is starting actually this Saturday, so in two days. So if you're thinking of getting into Agile Project Management, you want to be a Scrum Master, Product Owner, Project Manager, Project Coordinator, it's going to be starting on Saturday. We, if you can't make it this Saturday as far as the next 11-week cohort, there's another one in another 12, 13 weeks, so another two, another three months. Right, uh, it's on Saturday afternoons in Toronto time and then Wednesday evening Toronto time. It's virtual, it's live virtual. So it's like this class, I teach this course. So this is the one, we have, we have several courses at scale. This is the one course I teach. So you're gonna be getting access to me, uh, learning from a CEO or founder who also is a project manager. So everyone loves this course. Our average course rating is nine out of 10 right now. Wow. Um, oh. 9.5 for some other courses. Some of just 10 out of 10, just because of quality and immersiveness. The average completion rate is 90% in our courses. Nine out of 10 will finish the course. The average completion rate of e-learning courses, guess what it is, the average? 40%. 30%. So we're like three times the average, and that's how immersive the courses are. Um, so again, it's uh, 11 weeks. We start on Saturday. Um, and then after, so every single course has the same framework, right? Let me pop it open for you guys. I just want to share my screen real quick. So if you're watching, um, yeah, real quick. So at Skill Hat, I mentioned the four gaps, right? The four gaps that you're going to have is the technical skills, the hands on experience, uh, 
networking and coaching. So with every single one of our courses, the first step is the class, as you can see, step one. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can. <laughs> so this is the first step, take the class. So we're gonna leave you hanging when you're done. Um, you learn the software as well, you're gonna learn Jira, Smartsheet and Confluence. Now uh, step two is career coaching. You get a one-on-one -on -one coach who works with you on your resume. We'll talk about step three, which is the accelerator, which is another nine-week program where you actually work in the team as a project manager or a developer or a software um, designer, project designer, or a uh, BA. So essentially all the roles of the tech team, you actually you bring them together because you train them for every single role in the cross-functional team. We'll talk about that program at depth. Then number four is our networking events. We have our Tech Titans Gala every year. We have in-person events every quarter and online events where we connect you with recruiters. And then step five is job success support, which is what you were saying, which is kind of like career coaching after you land the job. So helping you succeed on the job. So it's a five-step process to fill those four gaps that I told you, you know, everyone will have when making a transition or getting promoted. And, and then the um, tech accelerator credit. Um, what what is that uh, piece? Yeah. So let me just accept the stage for what the career accelerator is. Um, most people can actually just go watch a YouTube video or YouTube course or Coursera or Udemy um, for a couple months if you're very dedicated because it's hard to do it alone. And then in three months they would have finished the course and learned project management or design or coding. But how do you convince the employer to give you that job, right? Because in the interview, they're going to be asking you, tell me a time you failed as a project manager. Tell me a time you had a difficult stakeholder. Tell me a time you had to launch a piece of software and a tight timeline. You're not going to have any stories to tell because mm. you've done before. Now, what some folks would do, or what we used to do back in the days, we just lie about it and just finesse. And say, yeah, yeah, I've been a PM for 10 years working at your competitor, and I did this, and it's all a lie. Right? And I saw this was happening all the time, and I didn't want to keep encouraging them because that's not the way to go about it. The way to go about it is to actually go do the work. So let me ask you a question, Yvonne. If you had a leaky toilet and wanted to get fixed badly, right, and you could pick one of two plumbers, plumber A spent the last one year taking courses. He watched 100 YouTube videos on how to fix toilets, and he got certified, but he never fixed a toilet in, in the morning. Whereas Plumber B never went to school for this, but he interned, he did an apprenticeship for three months under a master plumber, and then uh, got certified by that plumber and fixed 20 toilets in three months. Who would you rather go with, Plumber A or Plumber B? Plumber B. Why? Because he, he's done the work and he's also been tutored by someone who knows how to do the work and is a master in, in that craft. So. Well, he only went to school for three months. How about the guy who went to school for a year for it? Um, well, that's fine, but I feel like in the real world, there are lots of things you encounter that you don't encounter in school. Right? And there, there, you go, there it is. This is why we built the accelerator, right? People who learn project management skills or coding skills or design skills in boot camps or in university, love it, fantastic. Most people stay there. They keep taking more courses, more courses, but I can't, I can't get the job. I'm not getting the job. I'm not doing well in interviews. Because you're plumbing, hey, you keep taking all these courses, but you never actually got do, done the job. Mm. So we give you a chance to do that at Skill Hat. We built an innovation lab where anyone who wants to pivot into tech can actually come and do the work for three months. So there's no excuses anymore. There's no, there's no barriers, right? Mm. No one's going to give me the job. Well, here it is. Just join and build it. Build stuff. And so the Accelerator is a nine-week program where if you're going to be a designer, UX designer, product manager, software developer, Scrum master or business analyst, tomorrow you can start doing the work. So people form teams. So because we train for all the different roles in the cross-functional team, we put them together into the accelerator. So right now we have an accelerator with 40 people and there's five teams. Wow. And different teams are building different apps. So you pitch an idea. Idea. You say, oh, I want to build an app to connect African vendors in Toronto with people who want their products because it's hard. Vendors don't always have infrastructure and e-commerce and shipping. People who want to buy like traditional African stuff can't always find it in their location. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Cool. You pitch the idea. Developer says, yeah, I want to build that. PM says, yeah, I want to be the PM on that. Designer says, yeah, I want to design the screens for that. And so we all work together and build the app. Now, the cool thing is we've, we've done this accelerator for a year now. We've built three programs 
sorry, three apps in the first cohort, three in the second, so that's six, and then four in the last quarter. We built 10 apps in the last one year. And the cool thing is that these apps are now live in the market. Wow. So the, the people who built these things while getting training, they're actually now startup founders. They're making money off their app. So that's pretty cool. Really? an app called Black Scholar. We have another one, uh, Skill Hat Talent. Um, so the alumni are actually building their own apps and they leverage that to go get a job because now they have school. They say, yeah, over the last six months at Skill Hat, I'm right now a product manager. So they have that job title mm -hmm. in their resume. It's no longer a lie. It's actually real right they have the title they have a team that they worked on so if you're a product manager if you've never worked with a developer before you haven't like communicated here's a requirement go build it look at it test it and realize oh yeah i communicated that wrongly or this guy understands the vision let's do more or i've looked at the speed of the team and make an estimate for how fast we can go in the future that stuff happens when it's real not just textbook mm -hmm. so we help people become that plumber b through the accelerator. Now, the cool thing is on Monday, we're opening it up to employers as well. Mm -hmm. So stock founders, actual entrepreneurs who have real businesses and have money and have ideas can get our alumni to build the ideas for them. So we're now making this innovation lab where anyone with an idea for a product can come in here. Um, if, you're an, if you're an employer or an entrepreneur, we'll build it for you. If you're somebody who wants to learn to build, you can come in here and build stuff for employers and for companies and then we marry that together and everyone just wins wow thank you so much mo i actually had a bunch of questions but i i know we're just a bit short on time i wanted to quickly just re refresh the room hey everyone welcome we'll be discussing skill hats top three courses to help you try back and the different gaps that um you may not even know that you need, right? Um, and then if you want to learn more about the courses, please tap the link in Skill Hats bio and you can learn more. You can also send them a message if you can't find the information on the website, please go ahead and uh, do that. And we have one more course that we're gonna be discussing, but I had a question about the accelerator. Is it only for um, Skill Hat um, alumni or anyone who's like, you know, looking to join can pay a fee and be part of that because that gives them an opportunity to, to get the experience. Yeah, the only requirement to join the accelerator, you don't have to have taken a course with Skill Hat. You just have to have been trained in the role you want to play. So if you're saying, I want to come as a developer or a designer or a product manager, you have to have gone training somewhere else and be certified. So okay. that could be us. So a lot of our alumni will take the training and then go to the accelerator and build an app, whereas some will come from a third party a uh, trainer from university or from wherever, and then they come in here and then they build. The difference is if you take the Skill Hat Bootcamp, you get the accelerator at a thousand dollar discount. So that program is $2,200, 2200 um, And then you can pay over six months. All our programs have six month installments. Oh. So it comes up to being like 350 a month, something like that, which is really affordable. Okay. Put it on your credit card and just make it an investment. Uh, and then the cool thing is you're done the program in two months. You maybe, maybe you get a job in three months and then you're actually, you, you've recouped from your first income before you have to pay back for the program. Mm -hmm. uh, and so anyone who has been trained in a specific function and needs some hands-on experience and some coaching to be able to communicate to the employers that they can do the job and they have done the job. Um, or if you're a startup founder and you wanna just get someone to help you with your startup, as far as building out the product and validating the idea, you can come in our accelerator starting next week and we can build that for you with our online. And this, this information is on uh, Skill Hat's website. I can learn more about Skill that. Skillhat.ca, uh, a lot of information there. There's a chat bot, you can chat with the chat bot. It'll give you information real quick or you can, you can just check everything on the site. Uh, you can also book a call with me and my team. It's free, there's no cost. And we'll do a, an assessment of your skill sets to identify what's your background, what's the right, what's the next thing you should be doing as far as your career, what's your income targets. We have a few of our alumni who join the call. If you're a Skill Hat alumni, I see Dami join the call and a few others. Just post in the chat, what was your experience with Skill Hat? You know, what was the key thing you walked away with? So for the others who are trying to make a decision, um, hey, Christine, how are you? Me and Christine had a thing in the morning. Uh, yeah, now we're back here. You know, the hustle never stops. I got another one at midnight. You know what I mean? Wow. All right.
one thing you mentioned like if, if you're here um and you're looking to transition to tech this is the best place for you to be and there's something you mentioned about 300 dollars a month that's not bad um to start or to invest in my future and one thing i love about um well i, I love a lot of things about the skill hack experience but you get hands-on experience you get the coaching that you you get access to the network you get access to opportunities as well because of the network that skill hat has so you can visit the link in their bio to learn more about uh, their different courses we talked about the business analysis course we talked about the agile project management course and now we're going to be talking about the product management course. Um, so if, if there is anyone interested in, in, you know, diving into product management or to even find out if that's the place for you to be, you need to stick around um, as uh, Mo takes us through what the product management experience looks like. I, I feel like you talked a bit about it earlier on, so you could uh, uh, start from there. Yeah, so what is that's one of my, all, my, all the courses I love, uh, but I love the product management course because I took that course myself. And I'm learning a lot from that course just because you can never become a, uh, a finished product manager because the world is always changing. So what is product management? Let me ask you a question, Yvonne. What's your favorite product? Favorite product? Um, hmm. My laptop. Okay. Let me ask you a different question. Another, or another question. What's your favorite mobile app you use? Um, um, Uber Eats. Okay, and how would you improve it? How would I improve Uber Eats? Bob, you want to answer? That's product management. Product management is about identifying the products in the market, why you like them, but also how you improve those products. So working at Uber Eats, for example, as a product manager, your job is to think through improvements, think through growth strategy, think through customer acquisition. Oh. Okay. Right. So you own a specific product in the company or a feature set in the company or in the product. It's a big product. Um, and your job is to grow it. And so that comes with, first of all, market research. Understand who is the customer? Who are different customer segments? Is it younger people? Is it older people? What is their behavior? Right. Uh, and then figuring out the actual features that they need. So the number one skill that you need to do this job is, is empathy. That's the first skill. Being able to empathize with the end user and understand their pain points, their frustrations, and their goals, and then build features that allow them to get to that goal. So the first thing is doing that. Now, once I know what the customers want, um, I then have to justify it, right, to the executives to say, we got to build this feature. So I have to estimate the cost. It's going to cost this amount of money. It's going to take this amount of time. And then it's a, it's a bet. It's a risk. Right? So I see a few of my folks join. What's up to Nitash? What's up to uh, Christine and some other folks? Tenny, how are you? So we're talking about product management. So once you now know exactly what the features that the company wants are and you've, you've been able to justify, you got to go execute. Working with your scrum team, um, writing out the specific features for user stories, and then getting them to build it. And then you're accepting it and saying, yes, this is what I want. You're looking at the design. You're looking at the experience. You're looking at the speed. So product management is that intersection of three things, business, technology, and design. So you have to be well-rounded, a bit more well-rounded across business, strategy, pricing. Could you set the price of your product, for example? Is it, is it a subscription product, right? Uber is a subscription? No, it's not. Uber is you pay as you go, right? But they can admit a subscription. Why is it not a subscription? Why is it pay as you go, right? Netflix, do you pay for movie? No, you pay a one-time fee. So that decision-making around what's the right model for that product mm -hmm. is product. And technology, how am I building this? What technology are architecting? Is it a mobile app? Is it on the web? Is it both, right? Uh, do I have to sign up to use it? Is it free? Is it freemium? Whereby it's free to use this product and then I pay for more? What, what do I pay for exactly? What tiers is silver, this platinum? That's all product management, that whole thinking. It's very mentally exhausting to come up with that. That's why. Then, that's, that's why what? That's why it's probably one of the um, best paid opportunities, right? Yeah. So Amazon right now is throwing money at PMs. You know, I know PMs at Amazon making 300K a year, right? And that's not even like the highest paid product managers at Amazon. Um, so again, the third piece is so business, technology, and then design. So looking at the design of the product, how does the flow of the product enable the user to meet their goals? Because right now we know how people are. People are impatient. I download an app. If I'm not getting what I want in the first three or four clicks, I'm closing and deleting the app, mm. right? I go to a website, I'm like struggling to look at it, the fonts are off, the colors are like too much, I'm, I'm gone, 
right? And it all, it all depends on the user too. Like my, my mom might want really big fonts on the site. Like, you know how old people, their phones always like big fonts and stuff. <laughs> You're looking at the phone like this. Mm -hmm. uh, people was like, they want a more colorful, mm -hmm. a better experience. So again, you have to align your product to the user. Right. And so that's right. what product management is really about. And so our course teaches you that. I love our instructors in that course. Uh, I'll admit that our product management course probably has the most advanced instructors in, in terms of upper echelon of careers. So Tolu R is our instructor who's a senior product manager at Meta, Facebook. Um, he's just left Facebook now to Reddit. Um, and then the second instructor is the director of product management at h and Block. And the cool thing is she's actually hired some of the students in the community into uh, her company from the training. So that's pretty cool. I saw that happen recently. Wow. Uh, so I love those two instructors in the product class. I'm taking that class. I took the first cohort, taking it again because I'm learning so much from them in that in that class. And so that's the uh, product uh, management class. It's it's nine. It's ten weeks just to finish that up. All right. I do have a question from one of the uh, viewers. Um, Tammy says, "So the Uber One feature, I pay monthly for this. Will that be something the product manager does? Like that idea? Exactly. You got it. So the decision to say, okay." We have Uber, right? How can we grow? So you have four ways to grow, right? You can go to a new product, same market. You can do new market, same product, new market, new product, right? So for example, with Uber, the regular Uber cab, that's like the market is people who want to drive and you have the product. If I wanted to go to a new market, I just take that Uber app to Africa or to Europe, right? And that's how you grow revenue. If I wanted to have that same customer base add a new product to that i do uber eats so same people who use uber but now it's a different product right if i wanted to go new market new product i build a self-driving car so uber self-driving car again new product new market it's a whole different thing so growth strategy is your responsibility as a pm making that decision to say what exactly we're going to do next and so uber introduced uber one which is a subscription product that only made sense because they had Uber Eats and Uber. So now you have both. Mm -hmm. Just like you have Amazon, right? You have the Amazon store, then you have Amazon Prime, which gives you uh, free shipping on Amazon and video. So all that work of product strategy, features, and growth is product management. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. And how long is this course? It's 10 weeks. Okay. On Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m and Tuesday afternoon at 6 p.m. evening. Okay, okay, wow. And, and it's a similar uh, payment structure, people can pay monthly. Yeah, most of our courses are four to six month payment plans. And that course is 2,350 Canadian dollars. Okay, perfect, brilliant. Looks like um, um, uh, oh, we've answered all the questions here. Um, do you have anything else to add to it? Because actually, let me just refresh the room for everyone who's uh, here. We'll just discuss the top three products at Skill, uh, top three courses at Skill Hat to help you transition to tech. And you can find more and learn more about it by tapping the link in, in their bio. You can just follow them as well because they post a lot um, um, daily to, just to help you. But can you uh, share some more things, like just close us off? Yeah. To close it off, I just wanted to encourage everyone to say, you know, the future is bright. If you are not exactly where you want to be, this is the time. There's so much change, so much innovation happening right now, um, especially if you're a minority, if you're a person of color, which Skill Hats followers and Case Coach followers are, this is the time. What's up, Chema? How are you, Chema? Our sales advisor. Uh, she's on the call. If you need uh, any one to help you figure out what's next for you, just have a call with us. It's free. 15 minutes. Okay. We'll, we'll do an assessment of your background. Just go to skillhat.ca. Uh, the link to book a call is bookings.skillhat.ca. So book a call with us, and we can help you figure out. So you're actually someone's asking B or cybersecurity. We'll help you figure that out, mm -hmm. right? Uh, book a call with us is the key action. Or just go to our site, and if you like what you see as far as the curriculum and testimonials, Go ahead and apply. Again, our alumni are increasing their income by an average of 45K. This is an average. Some are higher, some are lower. You're going to have a great experience. You're going to cover all the four gaps. Again, I'll leave with this. The four gaps you got to cover when you want to make a transition or pivot or get promoted in your career 
one, learn the skills, technical skills and the soft skills. Two, get the hands-on experience you need. Go volunteer, intern, working accelerator, raise your hand up at work and say, I want to go do this thing. You have to get the experience before you can ask to get paid to do the work. Three is you got to have a network of peers and executives so you're not alone. You get the intel that you need. And then four, you have to have that confidence uh, for nearly interviews, which you get from a career coach who will work with you in your resume and your, um, your interview skills. And so that's a bit about the key takeaways. I look forward to hearing from everyone who joined this call. Uh, connect with us, just follow Skill Hat. We post every single day tips on how to nail it and be the best you can be as an entrepreneur and as a business professional. Well, thank you so much, Mo. And also to add to that, if you are looking to register for a course right away, you can use our code CASEFUL to get $50 off your um, registration. Someone says, I'm going to be calling for sure. She put it in the question yeah. box. Remember, use the CASEFUL code, get some money off your, your fees. Uh, we look forward to getting all the CASEFUL members um, into their desired careers. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mo. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Um, visit the link in Skill Hats bio now or follow them to stay up, up to date. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed evening. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Take care.